Acoustically treating a room is the best way to increase the quality of your audio recordings and give you significantly more professional results. Today, I'll be explaining what acoustic treatment is and why it's important. So what is the purpose of acoustic treatment? To better appreciate its importance, we first have to understand what is actually happening to sound from the moment it leaves a source, such as your voice or an instrument, and how those sounds are being picked up by the microphone. When you speak, sound travels in all directions, with the highest, cleanest volume traveling directly forwards and more muffled and quieter sound traveling sideways, behind you as well, and down and up. The sound traveling towards the microphone is considered direct sound, and everything else is reflected sound. It's considered reflected sound because it first has to travel to the enclosing surfaces before being reflected and traveling back again to be picked up by the microphone. Given the extra distance the sound has to travel, there is a delay in time between when the direct sound and the reflected sound is recorded, which causes echo and reverb. Depending on your microphone choice, how far you place the microphone from its source, and the surface type of your walls, floor, and ceiling, it will affect how much natural echo is picked up in any given room. A lavalier microphone pinned to your collar in a room with carpeted floors and a mattress or a couch will have noticeably less echo than a boom mic placed a few feet away from you in a room with no furniture and hard concrete floors. One of the worst rooms for echo is actually the bathroom. With all these hard surfaces in such a tight space, the sound waves coming from my voice bounce from each wall, floor and ceiling multiple times, getting picked up by the microphone each time until the sound wave dies. So how do we remove echo? Well, of course, with acoustic treatment. And how it works is the material you use acts as an absorbent sound layer that traps a portion of the sound that is hitting the surfaces around you, so less is reflected and picked up by the microphone. The amount of absorption depends on the type of acoustic treatment you use, where you place it, and the quality of the product. To make things more complicated, there are different objectives for acoustic treatment depending on if you are doing voiceover, recording music, or if you're trying to listen to music and work with audio. For recording spoken words such as voiceover work or talking head YouTube setups, the less echo the better. However, for music, some reverb is okay as you don't want to record in what people call a completely dead room where all the reverberation of sound is completely absorbed. This video will more so be focusing on the concept of acoustically treating a space for spoken word where the objective is to reduce echo as much as possible. Now that we know the basic concept of how sound behaves, let's quickly touch on what areas of the room are the most important for acoustic treatment. A room is made up of surfaces as well as two and three sided corners. The walls, floor, and ceiling would be the surfaces. The two sided corners would be where each wall meets another or where a wall meets a floor or ceiling. And finally, the three-sided corners of a room where wall, ceiling, and floor all converge. The converging corners of a room are the areas that give the most problems, and treating them will provide you with the most significant reduction in echo. The best way to treat these is with base traps, preferably stacked from floor to ceiling. This not only covers all the three-sided corners of the room, but helps with the coverage of the next most important area to treat, the two-sided corners. Using base traps this way will take care of all the wall to wall corners, leaving you with only the wall to floor and wall to ceiling corners. Base traps can be used for these, but it's impractical to do them on the floor, taking up valuable space, and they can be a little difficult to cover the wall to ceiling corners. Last and slightly least is the surfaces. The most important ones would be the wall directly behind the microphone and the wall behind you. This is because sound energy will be strong as traveling forward from you to the microphone and will take the longest for its energy to dissipate, giving it more power to potentially bounce back and forth between the back and front wall. Then there are the remaining side walls, floor, and ceiling. Having carpet on the floor already takes care of that surface, but if you're on hardwood or concrete of a basement, I would strongly suggest putting down a rug. Next, the ceiling is a tough one. It's difficult to practically stick something up there, and personally, I decided to leave the surface untreated. The products you use to cover these surfaces would be the ones most people associate with acoustic treatment, these foam panels. But another option that is cost effective yet still gets the job done is sound blankets. Although I have seen people use moving blankets and get decent results, these blankets are specifically made for absorbing sound. They are heavy 12 pounds and are filled with absorbing cotton fiber. So where can you buy acoustic treatment? Unfortunately, it can become very expensive very quickly, but you do get what you paid for in most situations. Starting from the bottom, you can get cheap foam from Amazon with huge bulk packages for a low cost. They even have fairly decent ratings. However, a little digging into the lowest ratings, some posts online, and YouTube videos comparing these products, you quickly see they don't absorb 
absorb sound very well. Moving into the middle ground is where I chose to invest my money. The products get the job done at a reasonable cost, but may not be as good as the top of the line. I chose to get my bass traps and foam panels from Foam Factory, a company that manufactures all sorts of foam products. They use a specific sound absorption foam and because they manufacture in bulk, you can buy panels and bass traps at about 60% less compared to the high end stuff. And to supplement the foam, I also purchased the sound blankets that I mentioned earlier from a company called Vocal Booth To Go. These also do a great job and cover significantly more surface area than foam at a lower cost. I've included links below to where you can purchase these products as well as to all the information I'm about to go over. The best way to compare the performance of these products is to find sound absorption graphs that discuss the noise reduction coefficient, NRC. The NRC scale goes from zero to one with one providing higher levels of sound absorption. Although it's worth noting that an NRC value higher than one is achievable for some products as the scale was designed around the most absorbent material known at the time when the scale was created. These tests are usually done in an acoustic laboratory and you should look that they are completed by a third party to make sure the results are legitimate. Here Foam Factory is comparing their two inch wedges against one of, if not the highest quality and most expensive acoustic treatment company called Oralex, which by these results Foam Factory claims is better at 69% less. Something worth mentioning here looking at this graph, you can see foam panels are not very good at absorbing low end frequencies, only the higher ones. Then down here they compare their bass traps to once again Oralexes, which are 62% cheaper and perform very similarly. This graph demonstrates how bass traps are great at absorbing all frequencies, which is another reason why installing them have the biggest impact at reducing echo in a room. You can choose between one, two, three, and four inch panels with thicker options offering the best performance. Looking at the sound blankets made by Vocal Booth To Go, they have similar graphs comparing the cost per square inch and NRC of their blankets against Oralex's foam panels. The average NRC for each wedge is listed here, as well as the price per square inch compared to the sound blankets. The blankets are better than the two inch Oralex, but not as good as the three inch. However, in their test, they were able to achieve a 0.95 NRC, which is better than a three inch Oralex panel, when the blankets were hung pleated instead of just straight. This will reduce the surface area covered, but increase performance. In my upcoming videos, I will be discussing how I plan the layout of my acoustic treatment and how much it all end up costing me. I will also be making videos comparing the sound quality of my studio area to a regular office with no acoustic treatment, as well as my basement that has more space but concrete floors. This will include several videos comparing different kinds of microphones such as lavalier mics, shotgun mics, and professional condenser microphones. I will have them linked here once they are posted, or you can subscribe to be notified when they're up. Thank you so much for watching if you've made it this far, and I hope I was able to give you a decent crash course into the basics of acoustic treatment. If you found any value out of this information, I would really appreciate you hitting that like button and leaving a comment below. Let me know what kind of acoustic treatment you've done for your home studio or would like to do, as well as what kind of audio you are recording. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.